Hi! Six or seven months ago, I did a video about general maintenance on my Hakko FR400 vacuum desoldering station. And I went over, we replaced some hoses and some filters and some other basic things. This is sort of a follow-up video. One of the things that you have to know when you have a vacuum pump desoldering station, one of the sometimes sort of chronic problems that can occur is that the heated tip and heated nozzle area, they can have a tendency to get clogged up. In a lot of other models, part of the reason for that is because the tip is heated, but the tube here is not heated. So as the vacuum pulls the hot solder off the board through the hot tip, it begins to cool down. And if it cools down too much, it can get stuck inside the pipe and then it clogs up. And that's why you have a declogging rod and you also have a pin vise with the appropriate size drill bits in case you have to sort of drill out what gets clogged up inside of it. One of the things I liked about the FR400 when I chose to buy it was that the entire heater assembly, which you'll see in a second, which is the tip, the tube, the knurled nut, and all of this metal part down in here, this all becomes heated. It's all at full temperature when you're using it. So the solder stays hot and melted as it flies through, and it doesn't begin to cool down until you get all the way here at the front seal of the receptacle that the melted solder piles up in. And that in theory means you should have less clogs. One of the things that I've noticed, I've had this now for, I think it's been nearly almost three years. And one of the things I've noticed recently, I would say over the last five or six months maybe, is that it tends to get lightly clogged up more often than it did when it was brand new. And I think it's because the, the heated tube here inside that the melted solder flies through, I think it becomes eroded from the rosin flux in the solder. Now it's really typical that the tips do wear out and they wear out because of the rosin flux and they become very pitted inside. Actually the tips can actually, if you use them for a long time, the tips actually can wear away and the holes become larger and it's just normal wear and tear. And so that's annoying. And this one, if you take the tip off, you really, it's kind of hard to see. But inside the tip, you can see that it's eroded away from the rosin flux. And I believe the same thing happens inside the tube here. Then you have, instead of a, what I would imagine would have been a smooth finished surface inside when it was new, now you have a pitted surface and that's places that little pieces of solder can sort of cling on to. I think that's why it tends to clog up more. What we're going to do today is, because I find that annoying and I want to know if that's the case, we're going to replace the heater assembly with a brand new one. So we've got a box of parts here. These I ordered from Heiko directly, which you can do. And it's mostly empty, but we do have a box for a bag. And we have some sort of general purpose stuff here also. We have a new tip, because whenever I order parts, I always order extra tips, because you should have always more than one. I ordered a new receptacle. This receptacle, it said it has a different part number than the original one did, and it said it was improved, and I don't know, it didn't really say how it was improved, but I'll take their word for it. And that is, these are all kind of disposable parts. If you use this a lot like I do, it's not uncommon in a single work day, I may desolder two or 300 joints. So it gets a lot of consistent and constant use. A new pack of the fiberglass primary filters that go in the end of the receptacle because these are disposable parts. They get clogged up and then you have to replace them periodically. So you always have to go through those. And then we have the most expensive part in the box, which is the new heat element. So let's go ahead and unwrap this and then we'll take a quick look at it before we install it. They did wrap it up well. 
as they should because this is not an inexpensive part. So there's our new heated nozzle assembly. Of course, there's nothing like brand new parts. They're all clean and shiny. So let's take a quick look at this. So what you have here, here, this is the actual heater assembly right here. And there's a sensor down in here. And all of this that you see all heats up to the operating temperature that you have it set for. This plate right here, and there's a hole in the end of it here, that's right inside where the seal in the receptacle sits. So that's this piece right here. So this is all up to temperature when you're using it, and that's what helps keep the solder melted as it flies through. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the original one from the handle and put the new one in and make sure it fits. So all you have to do, it's a good design, you need a medium-sized Phillips screwdriver, and all you have to do is remove the three screws. And I've done this before. I did this in the last video I made about this when I replaced the suction hose that fits into the end of the handle because you have to take this out to get the handle apart. And this just unplugs like that and the new one just plugs in. That simple. So that makes it really easy. Oops, wrong screw. The screws are two different lengths. You have two short ones that go on the sides and a longer one that goes in the top. And you don't have to really wrench on these. They are machine screws and you're screwing them into the aluminum body of the handle. They're not self-tappers going into plastic. So just make sure they're all snug. And then we'll need to put our new tip on that we got, and that sits on the end. And then we'll put our tube with the knurled nut. Now, I will say that for what the cost of the heating element was, and believe it or not, the assembly I just installed, it was about $190. It's not an inexpensive part by any means. And I really would think that for $190, you would get this brand new with it. I just think you should. I don't think this probably costs them very much to make. And you would think you spend that kind of money, you would have that included. And no, when you buy the heater element, you do not get a tip with it. You have to buy the tips separately. And we'll go ahead and tighten that up. There's a special tool they make for this. It's... Uh, plastic and it fits over the knurled nut and they give you this when you buy the whole setup because this way you can remove the sleeve and change the tips while it's all hot so that's what that's for and then we'll go ahead and we'll open up our new receptacle and we'll take a quick look at it and see I don't really necessarily see how it's new and improved. It looks pretty much the same to me, but whatever. So we'll put that in there and we'll close it up and it's ready to go. It's that simple to change out the heat element. Now, no, I'm not gonna throw this away. I'll hang on to this. It's a spare now and you never know. Someday, if there was a problem with this heat element, then I have a backup, even though it's not brand new, it's not perfect, it's better than having none. So of course we'll save this because there's really nothing wrong with it. We also, I also save the old tips. You should always have a selection of old tips around just in case you need one for some sudden reason. The other thing you can do with these are, most of the tips I buy are have a one millimeter opening in them because that's good for most work that you do. If you find that you have tips that have worn quite a bit from use, and like I said, the rosin in the, in the flux, eats away at the metal. What you can do with these is you can put them in a small vise and you can carefully drill out the hole to a larger diameter that you don't normally stock. These kind of tips come in, I think they're one millimeter through six millimeter. 
and if you have an eroded tip you know I'm not going to buy a lot of six millimeter tips but sometimes you need a larger one to fit over something like a standoff of a transformer or something like that you can easily get a six millimeter drill bit for you know a dollar and you can carefully drill it out and make it larger you are drilling through the finished outside material of the metal so it's not going to hold up as well but if you only use it three times a year it doesn't really matter and then you have a better selection of tips and it didn't cost you anything and that's good so let's go ahead and turn this on make sure it heats up and it works one of the things i like about this is that it heats up very quickly you probably heard the switch as i turned it on and this is set normally at 750 degrees Fahrenheit and we're already up to almost 300 and it rises very rapidly. One of the things that someone asked me about was when you buy a new tip here on the end of the tip it has a little tiny blob of solder on it so they said well I bought a new tip and there's no hole in it and it's like well you have to heat it up and suck the solder out of the tip so there's a hole we're up to 500 degrees and you can actually smell it now because it's brand new so it's burning off whatever residue was left over from when it was manufactured and we're up to 600 degrees one of the things about the fr400 is it won't the trigger won't activate the unit until you're over 700 degrees so you have to wait and now we're over 700 and we'll actually let it go up all the way and now we're at 750 so we're all set and it works fine and I know it's hot because I can smell it and also in looking at the tips I can see the opening in the old tip is probably 50% larger than the new tip so it's eroded away that much so what I'm going to do is since this is all new I want to see if I can prove out my theory that it's the wear and tear and pitting inside the tube that causes it to tend to be more clogged up. I do remember what it was like when it was brand new and it seemed like it never ever clogged up when it was brand new. And of course, gradually over time, it's a little bit and a little bit until finally it's like, wait, this isn't the same anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video now and I'm gonna wait about a week. And that way I have a week's worth of bench time with it to see if my idea is right. And then I'll shoot a closing and let you know. So I'll see you in a week. Hi, it's been a week since the first part of this video. And I said I would be back in a week to report on my theory that it was the surface wear inside the heater tube that would cause my Heiko FR400 to begin to clog up on a more regular basis than it used to when it was brand new. So in the first part of this video, you saw that I explained and I put in the new heater element and it's been a full week, it's been seven days. And in that amount of time, I have rebuilt 12 new tone intercom systems or master stations, I should say. And that would be, you know, if you want to round it off, maybe it would be a thousand joints or so. Some of them large, some of them small, but around that probably. And now this is turned off, it's not hot. And if we go ahead and unscrew this, which you can only do with your fingers when it's not hot. If it was hot, you have to use a special tool. Otherwise, you'll burn yourself. People like it when you burn yourself on the video. Anyway, so we'll do that. We'll take the tip off. And what I can tell you is that we'll take the reservoir off so it's partially disassembled. And I can actually look down through the tube. I can actually see my finger down there like that. And I can tell you that it looks pretty clear. Now, if we get the magnifiers on, I can actually see, see what's going on down in there. And I can see all the way down. Can't really see anything that's built up on the inside of it. Although we can take our light here. And we can shine it into the hole and take a look. Now you can see much better. And it seems to be, as near as you can tell, for it being so small, clean, clear, and still shiny. See? You probably can see it too. See? I'm sure you can see down inside there. See the light? There's the light. 
I can tell you that in the last seven days with all of those master stations that I have rebuilt, I have not even once had to use the cleaning probe, either the small one that fits through the tip or the larger one that you use when you take the tip off, you take the tip off to slide down through the heating tube. And if we reassemble this, tighten it up. The small one fits through the tip like this and unclogs the one millimeter tip. That, and I have not reached for it or used it even a single time in a week. And that is very much as I remember it being when it was brand new. So while of course it's not totally conclusive scientifically, designed it's not a scientifically designed test it's close enough to make me believe that the wear and tear on the inside surface of the heater tube from the rosin flux in the solder is what makes it eat away the other thing that I've noticed is this is the solder residue that builds up in the reservoir as you use the tool it piles up in the center of the collector like it used to do when it was brand new, which tells me that the airflow through the device into the reservoir is more streamlined. It's, there's probably less turbulence in the airflow, so the solder is more of a straight shot right down the center and lands right in the middle of the collector in the reservoir instead of it flying all over the place and being scattered on a, and on the inside of the plastic and so on and so on. So again, not, not a scientific experiment, but close enough for me to believe that with normal wear and tear, the inside of the heater tube becomes rough and pitted and then it collects small amounts and small bits of solder and so forth and that's what tends to make it clog up more readily than when it's brand new. So I imagine that probably somewhere after two years or maybe two and a half years when it starts to become more of a chronic problem, it'll be time to change the heat element again. So that's the follow-up on this. I'm very pleased. I would have rather not have to spend as much as I did to buy the heat element, but the convenience and the lack of frustration when you use it, it's worth the money, especially if it lasts two, two and a half, maybe even three years before it happens again. I'm going to send an email to Heiko about this and express my opinion and see if they have anything to say about it. And if they do, I'll report back. That's all for today. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps it'll be helpful to someone. If it did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.